Okay, so real quick, had a question about what we could do with this crystal ball to make it a look like it's floating and then rotate it around so that it is upright instead of inverted. Now, obviously, typically this is what happens with a crystal ball, but if you, that's the creative direction you want to go with it, that's totally cool. Um, typically. I always leave the original background layer alone and just create a duplicate of that and there's a couple ways you can do that right here in the layer menu off to the side this little three line section you can duplicate layer you can also hit control or command on a Macintosh and then J which I whatever reason I always just think of jumping the image to a new layer is how I remember that shortcut but um, Control Command J duplicates the layer. So with this, this is where I would go in and use the clone stamp tool. And you can do this whichever way you like, but looking at the, the wood this thing is sitting on, you've got a little light section over here and it closely matches the tones that are over on this side more so than here. So I would sample hold down the alt or option key somewhere in here and then just drag this over until you can kinda of see if your brush is large enough you see where the upper edge of the wood lines up so you want to kinda of match that up and then just drag it across and you might have to do a couple duplicates like that uh, and get in here and get the grass and everything else as well and don't worry about some of this kind of weird stuff that is showing up you can go through and redo that as well if you like um, because we're gonna mask most of that out and then go another round now I typically would also use the healing brush tool to kind of blend some of this together because you can see this crack and this crack and this crack is, is duplicated so I'll come over here and just pick a few other things to kind of blend that together so it's not so obvious that it was an actual duplicate. Same with the edge up here because yep, that one was kind of so just kind of you know work on that until it looks a little more natural um, not quite so well, cloned. And maybe come in, take a little bit of that across. Something like that. Okay. So, yeah, we've got this. If you create a layer mask, this icon right here that looks like a rectangle with a hole in it, um, that's where you can clean some of this up so that it doesn't look well chopped off so if you're not familiar with layer masking um, basically painting black on this layer mask will hide what's in that layer and white reveals so you can see right now it's white so it completely shows everything so I switch this to black use a paintbrush at a hundred percent now since this is a pretty hard edge on the the sphere I'm going to bump the hardness up on the paintbrush which is up here in your drop down options so we can just bring this back and I'm gonna go a little bit further so I can see the edge of where that sphere actually is zoom in on it and I'm using a, a Wacom, Wacom uh, drawing tablet to do this it makes it a lot easier to smoothly follow these uh, lines so I've switched back to white, and again I'm just going to paint in along this edge to make it look like a nice, pretty floating sphere. And you kind of have this stuff, so I'm going to see what I can do to go a little ah, wrong key. A little bit back and forth with that to make that look smoother uh, all right 
something kind of like that. Okay. So, now we've got that done, but we want to rotate that around. Um, and I'd like to do that without impacting everything else. So, Control, Shift, Alt, or Command, Shift, Option on a Mac, and E will create a duplicate of that entire image in a new layer. So, the difference between those two is like so. And what we want to do then is select this sphere. And again, it doesn't have to be precise. So what I'm going to do is just come off the top of that, off to the edge, and drag down a selection with the elliptical tool. Now if you hold down shift key, it actually will make a circle. And you want it to be probably just slightly bigger than the actual sphere. And this is, of course, auto snapping to the center, which is annoying, but you can see it's gotten a little bit over the edge there again, but that doesn't really matter. And with that, do the Control J or Command J to make a new layer out of that selection. So now we have this new layer, with, which is just the sphere. A little bit of the extra too, but we're going to mask that after we rotate it and clean it up. Okay. So, to do that, you just would do Edit transform rotate or the keyboard shortcut is control or command and T and then you just come out here till you get this uh, little arrow that shows the rotate and drag that around now if you hold down the shift key while you're doing that it snaps to every I think 30 degrees so you can easily make it in an exact 180 degree rotation okay uh, check mark up here accepts that and then we go in create the layer mask and same thing we were doing again earlier I'm gonna put that opacity back up and hardness of the edge back up and bring the brush size up zoom in here switch it to black and just start going around. Now you see there's a little bit of the original sphere showing through. And that's okay because we'll move this and position it and then kind of blend it together with this mask again to to make it look correct. And there's probably easier ways of doing this, uh, but with the size of this and, and how much there is to clean up, which isn't that much, uh, I'm, I'm fine with doing it this way. Okay, and then like I said, we take the move tool here and I'm just going to use the arrow keys on the keyboard, which just one click up shifts it around, kind of go back and forth, change this so you see if it looks like it's positioned right. That's pretty good. And then again, come back and finish with this edge. And the thing that like makes the the layer masks so effective is that you can just hit the X key and you'll see the black and white toggles back and forth. So if you accidentally go in here and, and, and bite out too much of it, just switch it back to white and you can push that right back to where you want it. Okay. So there's a pretty good 
rotation and floating sphere. Now if you want to make this you know even more realistic if you will create a new layer on here and then take this hardness down so there's it's a completely soft paintbrush and you can just ah, sorry I want to make sure also opacity is way down low probably 8 to 10 percent maybe 15 in there but you just start painting in a hint of a shadow in here really kind of make that look like it's floating on that uh, I usually change the blend mode here to multiply with black it doesn't make a, a huge difference but sometimes it's nice to add a color maybe a hint of blue or something so let me show you what that looks like if I was going to take this layer and use like a dark blue to do that set this to multiply And it just makes it have a little bit of a color tone to it. Might That might have been not quite dark enough as far as the color of blue, but then you can kind of adjust the opacity and some of the other things I like to do um, are using this layer style menu, these blend if options. So again, you get to that by either double clicking over here on just this gray area of the layer or up here in layer layer style options just go to blending options and what this does is if you bring this slider slider for the underlying layers up you can see in the shadow areas this side will will bring it down or eliminate that shadow from impacting the darker areas of this image that might be confusing the way I said that or up here you can bring it out of the highlights and that's kind of what I would do with this because it's a shading if you hold the alt or option key you can split this slider so it smooths that out and I wouldn't probably do a whole lot of this but just give it a hint of some of the highlights of the texture still showing through to to make it look a little more natural as far as, far as that blends into the the wood and I think I want to make that add some black into that with my paintbrush so it's not quite such a blue tint or come over here and pick one of the greens just to make it blend with the color of the photo all right so something like that so there you have it we've rotated and floated this pretty little crystal sphere and from there you can do other things like enhancing highlights or whatever you would like to do like one of the things I was noticing up here there's a little bit of an edge you could come in here with a another small paintbrush at a lower opacity pick this sky uh, yeah we're at 8 so maybe go with about 20 percent and just blend that little edge out of it Excellent. That's kind of cool. Alright. Hope that helped. And let me know if you have any questions.